welcome to this special throwback video. This particular video creation is actually a combination of two videos I created early in the part of the year 2018, when I was first beginning my public correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, tutoring, uh, period. I had been studying the grammar intensely for about a year at that point. Admittedly, had not gotten the depth of closure that I would later achieve, but I was almost there. And you will see in these videos, you will see several mistakes, several grammatical errors, and just for fun, for those of you uh, serious students out there, go ahead and uh, comment in the, in the comments field where you see mistakes. Uh, in the video like what I have written on the dry erase board and things like that because they are there there's there's plenty of mistakes to pick out for those of you that like to do those things it'd be good practice but back then I was trying to formulate a thesis of my volition for what I plan to do with this grammar and I made a confidential like about a seven minute video where I actually read adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble from a sheet of paper speaking to the camera which that was my thesis However, I tried to use only terms in the now space, whether they were contract or no contract, tangible, non-tangible, didn't matter. I was trying to keep it in the present tense, so to speak. Didn't use any past tense or future tense. So go ahead and listen to it and see if you can find any uh, past or future tense words in it, because I tried very hard not to use them. And then the last, the final video that I tagged on there was uh, a public video that I did where I gave an analogy between our diets, what we put into our bodies, and also what comes into our psyche, which began the psychological knowledge cultivation program that I embarked on back then, which has since become actually the most important part of the teaching, is the psychological concepts of quantum grammar. It's a huge hurdle that many people find very challenging. So, I hope that you look at it in this way. It's a historical document of where I was at that time in early to mid 2018, which seems like many, many years ago. Enjoy. When I am sick, I seek to balance myself so that I may heal. I clean up my food choices, perhaps cleanse my body, perhaps start physical motions and stresses which strengthen my body. In short, I cleanse and clean my physical body and may also perform workouts for continuous strength. But what of my mind? My mind is the most powerful part of what I am. The mind is the most powerful piece of my creation, of my body. My mind controls everything. It controls my feelings, my biology, sight, sound, taste, smell, etc. You name the function, the mind controls the performance. What may I do to cleanse my mind? The first thing I am with the memory of thinking is this. I must cleanse my language. I think in words. Every thought is at least of partial formation, if not full formation, of words. I think in hieroglyphics known as letters or numbers which I combine to form words and sentences in my mind. Then, these word thoughts form verbal sentences when I wish to communicate the thoughts to another person. Yes, I am with the comprehension that sometimes I think of things that I do not have the correct, specific words to verbalize, but I still try. Most times, I end up finding the correct words for the satisfactory conveyance so to speak. Thus, the words we think and speak shape our world. Being health conscious, I search for the knowledge of what components make up the foods that I eat and the liquids I drink, for the claim that I know that those food components will change my whole biological system. Following that logic, I also search for the knowledge of the components which create the words that I am thinking, which form the thoughts that become manifest in my verbal communication. 
I want the surety that the words I think and use are not poisoning my system. If the brain-mind computer is the most powerful part of the creation that is me, then I ought to be the authority concerning what kind of thought material I am with the download or upload of by my computer. Otherwise, I may be walking around making myself and others ill through my own blindness and poison communication. I began a laborious quest of studying Parse and etymology. I first began studying etymology in 1986, but not in the same way. This time, I am with the memory of searching each syllable of the multisyllable words. What I found was that I was using words that meant the opposite of what I thought. In other words, I was speaking in oxymorons. What psychological and biological effects may there be if I was thinking one thing with my words, but the correct meaning of the word was the direct opposite or different? I am with the comparison of drinking diet cola soda. I may think I'm making a healthy choice by drinking diet soda rather than regular soda, but I'm not. Once I gain knowledge concerning the topic, I stop drinking diet cola. Language may be a bit more difficult change for some folks. From the day we are born, our surroundings are full of oxymorons. Years and years, hundreds, perhaps thousands, of programming are with the crystallization of a foundation in us of poison language. At this moment, as I speak this, I comprehend that I am speaking in this poison language out of necessity. If I did not, then the reader would most likely not comprehend my meaning. If you listen with care, you will cite that I am speaking in the now time for the majority of the time. Some topics, I must be with the use of the oxymoronic language. I still speak it out loud. The difference is that I know when I am using the poison words. I know when I am using an oxymoron. I am with the choice of the stop and correct, or the choice of babble. The logic is that an honorable goal of communication is to gain comprehension and closure in the easiest manner possible without confusion. If these concepts are new in your mind, then speaking in English as taught in modern schools is the easiest conveyance manner at this time. This is the foundation of the construct I am building. I myself am new to these concepts. Some people are with the asking of the meaning of the badge on my shirt. This badge is with the notice of the flag I am navigating with. It is the correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar flag. Thank you for listening, my friends. What you see on this board pertains to me. This is my performance. If you have any questions about it, shoot me an email. Thank you. Watch your mouth. How many times have you heard that? Me? I can't count the times I heard that growing up. But it has more meaning to me now than ever. Why worry about language? Why worry about the words that you allow to come into your ears, through your eyes, and out your mouth? Why? Because the mind is the most powerful part of us. The mind controls everything. What we allow into our mind controls the mind. 
Language controls the mind. When I began studying language, quantum language to be precise, I found all this out. I found out that over half of the words that I use in everyday life were oxymorons, <clears throat> that the prefixes and suffixes negated the root meaning of the word. So I walked around thinking a word meant one thing when really it meant something else. So in my conscious mind, the mind I'm speaking to you with now, that's formulating the words, my conscious mind thought it meant one thing, like my conscious mind, me, uh, take the word befriend. I want to befriend you. My conscious mind thinks, oh, we want to be friends. But my inner subconscious mind, that's aware of everything, knows what befriend really means. Befriend means no friend. It means I don't want to be your friend. You're not my friend. How do I know this? Parse the word. The word be means no. It means away from, without. As in, behead. No head, without a head. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of probably thousands of examples of this in our language. We walk around speaking every day. It's like a person who's eating McDonald's. Grown up, never heard of McDonald's, so they're eating it, they're eating it damaging their physiology, damaging their, their bodies, and then they find out McDonald's is crap. Don't eat McDonald's. It's not even food. I don't know what that is. Plastic, maybe. You find out, so you change your diet. You change your diet. You, make, you take steps to eliminate from you, that from you because you don't want to poison yourself. You don't want to willingly, consciously, Put that crap in your body. I feel the same way about language. Now, I realize not everybody feels that way. Just like someone who smokes. Whatever they smoke. Yeah, smoking may not cause cancer. Okay. You can't tell me that inhaling smoke into your lungs is healthy. Same thing with the language. You can't tell me that speaking in oxymorons all, all day long doesn't do something to your psyche. Deep down, the part that we're not in touch with, but we ought to be in touch with, is touched by this. Someone, somewhere, poisoned this language. I don't have first-hand knowledge of this, but the evidence is there in the etymology, in the language. The oxymorons. I'm moving toward a construct that's based in quantum grammar. It comes under this flag, the flag of correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar. This is a language that enables us to speak in fact. There are certain mechanics in place that position the facts of what we want to convey. And when we do that, we also provide a dictionary, a concordance that defines every word that we state in our quantum document. That way, there are no poison prefixes, no poison suffixes, no assumption, no presumption. It is what it is. We make contract and we perform. And life is beautiful. This is the construct I'm working toward. Thank you.